What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Knowledge Efficient, where we talk about all things educational. Today, we are going to be talking about Western Governors University Master of Public Health. So this is just kind of an overview. The official program itself starts August 1st. If you guys haven't signed up for it, highly encourage you to. It is a pretty rocking program just from the looks of it. And so I've uh, compiled this presentation to create an overview of what to expect when you start a Master of Public Health uh, and so, anyways, before we go into anything else, join the Master Public Health Facebook support group. Um, so, it's just over on Facebook. It's WGU MPH Master Public Health. There are a decent amount of people that are already part of the group. And so, as soon as the program starts, you won't miss a beat. Uh, there are people who are there to help answer questions, help support each other. Um, and so, anyways, yeah, don't forget... Join the Facebook group. But anyways, guys, let's talk about it. So Masters, uh, uh, this Masters of Public Health, this has not been released yet. So we don't have that much statistics on it. So this is what is taken from WG's official website. So what they're doing is because there's no statistics on it since it's a new program, they are using similar programs. So uh, according to the stats, 60% of graduates finish similar programs in about 21 months. Uh, this varies, guys. It depends on how self-motivated you are to get this done. If you're very self-motivated, it'll probably take you less time. Uh, so anyways, the tuition, uh, looking at a $4,995 per six months, which is nice. Um, some of the programs recently have increased. So if you are looking at other programs at Western Governors University, I would double check. Um, they've been sending some emails out to some students about about the increase and for some of the programs unfortunately it's it's quite significant so keep an eye on that so so you don't miss uh anything there so anyways the average salary increase is about 13k or so um this is just based off of i believe yeah just levitt school of health in general which is wgu's uh school of health pretty much um so anyways this is this varies so much because, like I said, this is not about the Masters of Public Health specifically because it hasn't come out yet. So we are going to find out in the future how accurate this is for the statistics. But anyways, let's go over what kind of courses are involved. So based off of the website, here's what we've collected. So we got 12 courses. They're focusing a lot on the foundations of public health. So uh, in my undergrad, I, did, I took a few uh, public health classes and uh, so I'm kind of familiar with, with some of this, but, you know, it's just an undergrad course. And so I'm sure it goes into way more depth, but pretty much these are crucial for improving and protecting the health of populations worldwide. So uh, we've got about 12 courses here. So principles of epidemiology, biostats and anal analysis, public health finance and funding, public health assessment, program planning, intervention and evaluation. That sounds like it's probably going to be a PA assessment rather than OA, but we don't know those we don't know those details yet either. Um, social and behavioral determinants of health, public health leadership and administration, global health, environmental health, public health core functions and essential services, public health education and promotion, public health policy and advocacy. And then finally, the capstone, like any master's program. So that's what it looks like. Um, as of right now, those are the exact courses. Uh, they have not, you can also go onto the website, look at the program guide for, I think, a little bit more information. But pretty much what they do is they focus on very specific key concepts. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go over what those specific key concepts are, uh, just so that you're familiar with what a uh, master's of public health program is like and, and kind of what to expect when you jump into these classes and, and work on the assignments. So uh, biostats and analysis. Uh, and so pretty much biostatistics, if you guys have ever taken any statistics classes or anything, so biostats is pretty much applying those statistical methods to biological and health sciences. Uh, so uh, key concepts include the descriptive statistics, which summarizes data, inferential statistics, which makes prediction about a population based on a sample, survival analytics, which deals with time to event data, uh, clinical trials, which test the effectiveness of treatment, and epidemiological studies. Uh, this examines health and disease patterns. Um, so applications, uh, as for the applications of biostats and an and an analysis, there uh, there's analyzing the effectiveness of new drugs or medical treatments. So you can see how that would be applied. 
studying the impact of risk factors on health outcomes and public health surveillance in response to outbreaks. Um, so overall, that's kind of what, what that consists of. Um, and then the program also goes over environmental health factors. Uh, and so pretty much environmental health focuses on how the environment affects human health. So going over key concepts, we've got pollution, toxic ecology, occupational health, climate change, and waste management. Uh, and so if you guys want to look at this more in detail, you can either pause the video or if you go to the Facebook group, you can actually see this entire presentation as a PDF. Um, so you can go through it a little bit more thoroughly. I'm just kind of brushing over this and, and you can look at the details um, more specifically later if you'd like. So uh, some of the applications, monitoring and controlling environmental uh, pollutants, implementing regulations and policies to reduce uh, hazardous substances, as well as conducting risk assessments and health impact assessments for new industrial projects. Cool. All right. It also, the program goes over a lot of epidemiology. So um, we've talked about it before in, in some past videos, but epidemiology pretty much studies how diseases affect populations. Um, it involves measuring disease frequency with incidence and prevalence. Um, identifying risk factors, designing studies like the like a cohort study or case control studies, um, investigating disease outbreaks and conducting screening and surveillance. Uh, epidemiology helps identify disease causes, evaluate public health interventions, and guide health policy decisions. So very, very important topics. Okay, um, now let's go into global health. So global health pretty much addresses health issues that cross national borders. Uh, if you're familiar with COVID-19, I think that is a huge example of global health applied in today's world. So uh, key concepts include health disparities, infectious and non-communicable diseases, health systems strengthening, and global health governance. Efforts in global health involve implementing international health initiatives, including uh, researching health challenges, collaborating on health crises. Uh, so, for example, global campaigns against diseases like HIV or AIDS um, and malaria have saved millions of lives. So you can see how that would be pretty important. All right, now we have public health policy and advocacy. So public health policy and advocacy pretty much involves creating and implementing health policies and influencing policy decisions. Key concepts include policy development, legislation, regulation, advocacy, health economics, and ethics when it comes to public health. Uh, applications include promoting vaccination policies, engaging stakeholders for health initiatives, and evaluating policy impacts on health outcomes. Advocacy is essential for mobilizing resources and public support for health policies. All right. Health education and promotion. So health education and promotion aim to inform and motivate people to adopt healthy behaviors. Uh, key concepts include the behavior change theories, program planning and implementation, community engagement, communication strategies, and evaluation and research. Applications include creating a, a campaigns for physical activity and healthy eating. Uh, I think of Michelle Obama <laughs> for that. I remember she had so much uh, fight against obesity campaigns, things like that. Um, developing school-based health programs and conducting workshops and seminars. So effective health education can lead to significant improvements when it comes to public health. So to conclude, um, we've pretty much covered a broad range of topics, biostats and analysis, environmental health, epidemiology, global health, public health, policy and advocacy, health education and promotion. Each of these areas is vital for understanding and improving public health. Um, so I, I encourage you guys to delve deeper into these topics, uh, go back and read some of the specifics that I've put into this presentation specifically since, since I'm just kind of doing a broad overview of it. Um, and again, if you guys want to see that, uh, PDF you can look on the Facebook group uh, just join the Facebook group it should be under files um, but yeah consider how they intersect and influence each other so this program overall it prepares students to develop implement and evaluate public health initiatives 
And uh, as as a biomedical science graduate for my undergrad, uh, specifically, I, there's so much when it came to research methods and addressing health issues and uh, it, you know, I, I think it just delves even deeper. And so I'm very excited to start this program myself. So, uh, anyways, join the Facebook group for support. Um, and let's, let's get this all, let's get this worked out together. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I wanted to make this one a shorter video, but, um, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you enjoyed this, if you like talking about all things educational, we go over a lot of Western Governors University content um, and some other life advice content, educational advice content for other universities and everything. But yeah, again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and stay awesome.